Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss lead code problem of the day and today's problem is maximum length of a concatenated string with unique characters and it is a medium level problem. So the problem basically says that we have been given an array of strings. We have to select a subsequence from this particular array such that when we concatenate all of those individual strings, the final string should have only unique characters, right? And we have to find the maximum length of the final string. Now, in this case, you can see the array size is up to 16 only and each of these elements have a length up to 26, right? And uh, uh, according to the constraints, if we can only create a string which has all unique characters, it is uh, straight away apparent that our final answer cannot exceed 26, right? So, this is uh, our whole problem. Now, one way of uh, doing this particular problem is since the value of n is very small, it is only 16, you can try to create all of the subsets and try to go through all of the possible subsequences, whichever of them are valid can be considered in one of our answers. So, let me just demonstrate what I am trying to say. So, let us just discuss this particular test case only. If I take this from here and uh, if I can paste it here, yeah. So, you can see that this is a test case, right? We have three strings u, n, i, q and u, e. So, basically what they are saying is this u, n cannot be taken with this particular u, e because then u will be repeated twice and we only want unique characters. But u, n can be taken with i, q as well as i, q can be taken with u, e, right? So, this is also possible and uh, let us say we can only take i, q as well, but in this particular case, the total string length will be equal to 2 and in this case, the total string length is 4. So, this is obviously the better answer and hence we are going to take this one. Now, what do we mean by generating all subsets, right? So, basically what we are trying to do is, we are going to go through all the possible combinations where we can take either of these elements, right? So, one way to do this particular problem is through backtracking. The other way is the more cleaner way and that is through bit masking. So, let me just demonstrate what I am trying to say. Here there are three elements. So, first of all, I am going to run a loop from 0 till less than 2 raised to the power 3 or 1 left shift 3, right? Both of these things are, same, are the same. So, 2 raised to the power 3 is 8 here. So, basically, I am going to run a loop from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right? Now, in this particular for loop, what I am going to see is, I am going to convert these all numbers into their binary form. So, this is 0, 0, 0. I am writing three three digits because our number of elements is three, right? Then I write zero zero one, then I write zero one zero, and then I write zero uh, one one, and then I write one zero zero, then I write one zero one, then I write one one zero, and then finally one one one, right? Now this might seem only some uh, binary numbers, but there is an interesting property about these numbers. If you carefully observe them, and Consider 0 as not take and 1 as take. So, there are 3 elements and there are 3 digits in each of these binary numbers where 0 is denoting that do not take this particular element and 1 is denoting that take this particular element. Let us say this is pointing towards the 0th element, this is pointing towards the 1th element, this is pointing towards the 2nd element, right? Now, if you take all of these numbers, you will realize that they are covering all the possible combinations that are possible on these three uh, values, right? So, you can either take, let us say, let us just take any one of them, let us take 5, right? So, it is saying that you want to take the uh, second element that is ue, so let us say this is 0, 1 and 2, you want to take ue and you want to take un, right? So, this is one possible combination. Let us discuss 6, what happens is when we have 6, so we are taking 1 and 2, so 1 is iq and 2 is ue. Right. Similarly, all of these numbers are going to denote all the possible combinations. So, basically, when you traverse through all of these numbers, for each number, you can figure out whether the ith element is set or not by figuring out whether the ith bit is set or not in this particular number. Right. So, this way, basically, you can figure out all the possible combinations. But let us say we have one of the possible combinations, let us consider 5 only, where we got ue and un. Right. We got these two characters together. Now, we have to figure out whether it is possible to have this as a valid string or not. So, what we are going to do is, we are going to create a frequency array of size 26 and 
go through all the elements in this particular uh, range, right? So, we have ue, then we have un, we are going to go through all of these elements, all of the characters and increment the frequency of the character by 1. Now, if any one of the characters has a frequency greater than 1, that basically means the answer is not possible. Otherwise, the answer will be, answer will be maximum of previous answer, comma current answer. So, what will be the current answer? Current answer will just be the sum of the length of all of these characters, right? So, this is what we have to do. Now, this part is uh, something many people will find new because uh, this is uh, a very interesting thing. The other way would be to do backtracking where you take one element then not take an element and this is similar to that only. The time complexity is exactly the same. It's just a more cleaner way to do the same thing, right? So, now uh, in this particular case, you can figure out all the elements, you can implement the checker function and it should work in the time complexity. Now, one more thing I wanted to point out. So, if you actually see, this is also what we do in the backtracking. So, you see, we did not take this particular element, then we did not take this particular element, but then we did not take this particular element. And then we backtrack to the zeroth element. And then we try to take this particular element, again not take, not take, then we backtrack. Then we did not take this particular element, but we took this particular element and then this particular element again was not taken. So, backtracking also works in a similar way. It's just that the ordering of the elements might be different and uh, it this particular code will look a lot simpler. Now, one more question is, how do we actually identify whether the ith bit is set in any particular number or not? So, I am covering all the beginner level questions as well because I believe a lot of people will be watching this video. So, I am not ignoring any of the questions. That is why I am explaining these small details. So, if we have 101, I want to find the, whether the ith bit is set or not. Let us say, I want to find the second bit is set or not. So, one way of doing it is, let us take 5, right shift it 2 times and then take its and with 1. So, when we right shift it 2 times for the second bit, what will happen? This number will become equals to 0, 0, 1, right? And now, this but add 1 operation basically finds out whether the rightmost bit is set or not. So, by right shifting this particular number by 2 times, I have made the second bit equals to the rightmost bit, right? So, this particular number comes to the rightmost position. And by and 1 operation, I can basically figure out whether the rightmost bit is set or not, right? So, basically, this is one of the ways of finding whether it is possible or not to take this particular element, right? So, now let me show you the final code. What I have done is, I have created my answer to be 0 and I have initialized my end with array size. Now, what I do, I am just going through all the possible combinations starting from 0 till less than 1 left shift n. For the current combination, I have initialized my current answer with 0 and my frequency array with like 0 with all the values 0 and size 26. Now, I go through all the elements. If the current element is taken, where i is the current uh, combination, j is the uh, element that I am talking about and then I am taking and 1. So, if it is present, I am just going to add the answer, uh, add the size of the current uh, string to my answer and then go through all the values and then increment their frequency by 1. Now, I have initialized my OK visible with 1 and I go through all the 26 characters. If either of them is greater than 1, I set my OK as 0 and I break from here. If OK is 2, I am just going to set my answer as maximum of answer comma current answer. And then at the end, I can just set on my answer value and this would be the final solution. So, let me just quickly submit this and show you that this particular code works and this solution is absolutely correct. So, you see this passes all the test cases and this solution is correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video. And don't forget to share thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really, really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So, that is it for today. Till the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe. Bye-bye.